Hello, and welcome back to the Power Podcast, the way the Lords intended it. Today we're going to be talking about one of God's mistakes, the Wasp. Now hold on there. Now the, the, hold on there. <laughs> Dare you, Joe. Off, we're starting off this podcast with some controversial opinions right I here. am very exactly. sorry to all of He's those. He's being pushed up now. Okay, so this week we're going to be talking about wasp physiology. A few weeks ago we spoke about spider physiology, and before anyone asks me, this is probably going to be the last quote-unquote physiology power that we actually touch on in the terms of transformations. After this, more than likely, we're actually going to just put it all in a big pile and just call it animal transformation powers uh, in another separate podcast. Why? Because... Otherwise, we'd go on for the rest of eternity talking about all of the different animals. Uh, but I don't know. Reason... I see no problem with that. <laughs> I do. But the reason... <laughs> maybe maybe if we really run out of, of uh, specific uh, videos to do. But today, we're actually going to talk... Videos forever. <laughs> we're going to be talking about money, wasp Joe. physiology, Sam, because... Out of all of the different powers, this one is actually close to my heart, as much as I hate wasps. Um, because not only is Sam playing as a character that we will get into in a minute, but the first two characters that ever were to be played was a character called Hornet, uh, an, an escort who was a wasp girl, and also the NPC Wasp Man. Those were the first two Wasp Physiology users in the game uh, proper. Now, the canonical character Wasp Man is actually an official uh, piece, and he's also in the comic on Patreon. Sorry, excuse me. Okay, so, Sam, you also play a character that has Wasp Physiology. We'll, we'll go into that later, but that is the main reason. If you guys don't know what we're talking about, check out the dev plays as we have been playing, obviously, Animite Tales, uh, playtesting it as we're trying to develop it. But Sam is currently playing as a character known as Adrian B. Crawford, who has wasp powers and structure manipulation. Anyway, so we'll go into the first few rules, and then we'll actually talk about all of the different ones. Rule number one, it's a power podcast, so we're going to be talking about a power. So, yeah, get ready. Rule number two, that's it. So... The main three things that you need to remember about this power. First of all, wasp physiology is not necessarily talking about the wasp's physiology. It's instead talking about the superpower to either turn into, already have, or have parts of a wasp's physiology. Therefore, we'll be talking about the three categories. The ability to transform into a wasp, the ability to transform into a hybrid wasp, as in half-human, half-wasp hybrid, and the final one of just having certain physiological attributes or traits or even upgrades that come from wasp-like capabilities, despite keeping mostly, if not entirely, a human form. Now that we have those out of the way, we'll begin. First one, the ability to transform into a wasp. Sam and Alex, take it away. I think you might need to get this one, Sam, because we actually saw you in the death place. Not only yeah. do into a hybrid wasp, but as a teeny tiny wasp. I Indeed. love that. <laughs> my in my very small wasp form. I think that's, that's, that's so good though, because like it, yeah. it's yeah, you're like a perfect like, spy at that point with your tiny tiny wasp. <laughs> yeah, best part is is that I think I could probably communicate with other wasps when I'm in that form. I think can I? Question. Um, Mark. I'm gonna say, considering from what I looked up, I'm not sure. I think it's to do with dancing. You know, you, you know what I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say we'll find out because yeah. <laughs> it, it'll, it'll be funny to find out either one. So I'm gonna that. say I we shall find well. out. You just see Asian <laughs> human forms moving their bottom. In like different directions to indicate. <laughs> yes, we go that way. The wasp told me to. <laughs> well, I mean that's the thing. Because one of the powers is like being able to command wasps slash bees. No, no, no. So I guess it's, no, I it summon wasps. Oh, you summon wasps. Okay, so yeah, it's yeah, like I summon. Um... Them. Well, technically, you're commanding them to your side. You're not literally like 
make making them apparate out of nothing. I mean, yeah, kind of, but also means I just summon them to me. I, well, I put again, the call light like, into the have, world, and I have, just summon they have them. To be, they have to be within a specific radius of you. Oh yeah, they can't be in a, like another town or anything, and they're like, you know, ah, the wasp signal. Also, I also, just like, just, I would you just see from see... different dimension a warp, like a wee warp pole opens, just wasps see, this, come out. This is why quantum space manipulation would be great with wasp physiology, because you're like, aha, <laughs> there's no wasps in your dimension. Who said anything about this dimension? Snaps fingers, pocket dimension opens up, portal just rains, multi-dimensional wasps. <laughs> you fool! <laughs> So yeah, yeah the ability to turn biological. into a wasp, Sam. <laughs> yes, into a wasp. Sorry. Oh, well, I mean, I'll just ask about communication first. But yes, uh, it's it means then that I'm very good at evading attacks. Because if you were trying to smack a wasp, very hard to do sometimes unless they're being dumb and just standing about. But also, when they're in there, to avoid you as well. Like everyone, just like, oh, dog, go, the wasp, no, you know. So <laughs> that's what actually. To be honest, I should have advantage on intimidation because most people are intimidated <laughs> by wasps. <laughs> uh, but uh, but no, the best part is with that part is because people have heard the podcast. I can't. I kept asking, could I poison my stingers? The best part is in wasp mode. If I sting someone, I can add. If I I roll for, I can add that poison damage. To, in the game, I think wasps do one point of damage when you sting them in that mode. When you use poison, you add a d8. No, you start with a d6, but I can do a d8. So I can just fly about and sting people to death. Quite easily, actually. Yeah. Not that my character would, because they're honourable. Okay, and so... being a teeny tiny wasp would be cheating. <laughs> Yeah, I, again, this is going back from the spider thing. If you have the ability to turn into it, it's actually relatively useful, but it's also relatively useless, because if someone just... Say, for instance, your ability is to turn into a wasp. Yes, people are terrified of them and want you to get out, want, want you to be out of, your, out of their house or out of their face, whatever. But the one problem that I'd actually say with this is... If you suddenly like flew around and you're like, oh, okay, yeah, I'm just gonna annoy this guy, and just so happen to that they have some poisonous spray or even just a couple of sandals and catch you in them, mm. you are the deaded so hard. Yeah, it does have a stuff inside. What if a bird, you know, comes along and eats you? Would you ha de transform at that point and explode that bird from the inside? Or I mean, at that point, I could just poison die. it. You I'd poison say it if, it, just if it swallows you ground. whole, but if it chews you up, I'm I'm sorry, but there ain't no coming back from that. I mean, I don't, I don't think birds chew. I mean, I they do. They can stab that. you with their beak. Yeah, they can <laughs> stab you with their beak. Plus, I think they can. I, it's not that they have teeth per se but they can technically like chomp you into separate bites yeah i assume for if it's just a, like wasps aren't gigantic well i mean some wasps are but i'm assuming the wasp i play isn't gigantic no if a bee were if a was if a bird were to try and get me depending on the bird i guess depending on the bird most likely it would swallow me whole as opposed to trying to bite me to bits i think hmm Again, we'll have to see whenever, whenever I'm see. next time. I'm next time I'm in, I'm in wasp mode. You'll just see Joe say, "Sam, roll, roll perception, feel bird flies in, chops you up." Then we'll see what happens. <laughs> I'm just gonna roll a severity, and I'm just gonna look. I'm just gonna look up and just go, Sam. It's time. Four times damage. So, suddenly, well, suddenly that's everyone 350 else. Three hundred and fifty damage. Suddenly, everyone else hears dead. chirp, 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 but all you can hear is caca, caca, <laughs> caca, motherfucker. Bam. <laughs> Hope you're ready. Here it come. Yeah. Um, but uh, and yeah. also it does. It also even like even a first level before you get the hybrid mode does at the very least give you more capability for movement. Because yes. you can just fly like the top of a building, depending on your speed, depending on your movement rating. You could just fly to the top of a building and then de-transform, and then you've moved from, a f from where you have to the top of the building. 
can at, at the very least it help you move places easier. Yeah, that is true. I guess I want to. I want to make a joke about going from A to B, but it's well. Ah. So... Dang. I mean, I, as we as I as I taught you all, what bees descended from wasps, or at least a wasp-like ancestor. So there are. You could make that joke. See, what I love about Sam is that he has when he when he gets into something, he really does. And when he was like, you know researching his character he knows all of these amazing wasp facts now he does. Uh, they have yeah, five eyes people wasps have five eyes I have no one told me these before who needs five eyes I've always assumed that the most amount of eyes that you need is either two or at least a symmetrical number of eyes why Wait, is it that they have why? five well, because I, you know the two big eyes on your side yeah, of the head. Nice. That's for when they're out flying to detect for enemies and also detect for like their food and prey. The three eyes, the very small eyes, which are pretty much on the, kind of like the middle of their head, are for where, when they're inside the hive and it's dark, or they just have to focus what's in front of them and they can see. Ah. Oh, okay. So that's like the big eyes are for when it's like light out, they can see, they have to protect themselves small eyes whenever they just have to focus on what's in front of them that's for when they're and at also home. when it's dark yeah in other I mean, words, don't you have your have... own oh my gosh yeah. guys i just realized they have their they have their they have the i just realized what it is they have oh. their driving eyes and they have their reading eyes <laughs> holy shit <laughs> Whoa. Okay, so just you like know again, you know this, Joe, my character should definitely have dark vision now, is what you're saying? No. Um, <laughs> no. So, I mean, I might add something for them that, allow, well, that will allow them to maybe gain an advantage at reading or at least seeing small detail, but we'll come back to that. Yeah. Okay, so one particular thing that I actually will say about this one that we didn't say about the last one, although actually no, we did say about the last one, which is a whole thing of when someone goes, oh, well, what I wouldn't give to be a wall on the fly, uh, a fly on the wall fly on the wall on the fly, bloody hell uh, a fly oh, on the I wall. say that all um, the time <laughs> but at the same time, like, you know with a spider, if people, if you're small enough, slash if people really aren't that, you know, terrified of spiders you could get away with being on any wall in almost any location Wasp, on the other hand, very little people in this world would ever look at look at that and go, yep, I'm okay with that thing that has a stinger on its bum to be within any amount of distance with it, within the same personal space that I share, but also in a very closed, confined room. So, not, even well, a, not even a stinger, though. Also the sound, because, you know, wasps... I mean, I don't know what uh, Sam's wasp character sounds like, but, you know, most wasps, you know, they get... <laughs> yeah, just constant sound. And it's like, you know, as soon as they come in, it's like, get out. Get out, you're making too much noise. It <laughs> sounds like, mean, you know, you know those old-fashioned propellers? Like those planes? <laughs> yeah. And they started up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. I th- I'd say... I I'd say the noise, the noise is is uh, the noise pollution is bad enough, but I mean, you know, at least with a spider, you could scuttle away and get under something, and you know, you're relatively fine. And most people will just go, "All right, fine, okay, I'm not even going to bother chasing you," unless if you're a really big spider, and some people are like, "No, I either need you to get out of my house, or I'm going to have to kill you." Whereas with a, a wasp. It does not matter where you are. If they hear you, they will hunt you down. Because you sound like a wasp, you might very well be one, and if you have a stinger, you're even worse off. Uh, I mean, as we, as, I, as I explained to you, only female wasps have stingers. Yes, Sam, but if I find a wasp in my house, I am indiscriminately going to try and find it, and if it, if it will easily remove itself from my house, fine, but if it won't, it's getting sandal sandwiched. <gasps> Gasp of surprise and shock. So, that controversial thought out of the way. We're now on to hybridization. This one is probably the weirdest one because there's so many different ways of hybridization. There's either man spider, like where it's just literally it stands on two legs like a human but it literally is just a wasp. Others are very weirder, like Wasp Woman, where it is just a human's head 
on a large wasp body. Depending on uh, what you, um, uh, depending on which uh, movie, because um, <laughs> the Wasp Woman TV movie of 1995, a comedy classic, if ever I saw one, uh, has the, the whole scary head, you know, of the wasp and the, you know, sort of the great big stinger and all different kinds of different limbs. But the like, but it is like the size of an enlarged human with some massive tits. Like those are that's the main thing about that's what I mean, of woman. course. Really <laughs> or, either that or the classic video game Harvester. Oh god. Where yeah. you also oh. meet another wasp woman whose only wasp like attributes I think are like below the waist. Remember correctly? Whenever you try I mean the death scene when you kill her, all all she has is like normal and then BAM! That's when she has the giant thorax. She's kind of like a wasp centaur in a weird way, isn't she? I guess you wasp could say centaur. that. Yeah, yeah actually, that yeah, makes sense, because there's, like, the spider centaurs. Exactly. Similar to the Wait, ones where... in Dark Souls. Hmm. We have to... We have That's the next character idea. Wasp centaur. <laughs> I mean... Wasp I, weirdly enough, I'd be alright with that as a, as a, as a unique attribute transformation uh, for, and... for your character. <laughs> That's not going to be it. I'm no, no way. <laughs> Waspator. Yeah. Uh, fair enough. Um, I'd actually say that this actually does make it a lot more dangerous than being able to turn into a wasp because although most people are actually relatively safe by getting stung and it just being really stingy, some people are actually very severely alert, severely allergic to the venom and the or poison, and therefore, um. You know, obviously the, you know, the tricky bit is it could kill people or it could, you know, give them a horrible rash or something. And depending on certain wasp venoms, it can actually just be lethal straight up or if you've been stung too many times. Um, but the, I'd say if you are the size of a human being and you have a stinger to match as such, that weapon, that, that well, that object of your body, that protrusion is now a lethal weapon with the capability uh, of, well, impaling a human being on it. And forget the poison for seen. a second, that could actually kill someone alone. Plus the poison, I dread to think. I mean, as we saw in the campaign, when I didn't mean to kill that man, but stabbed him right in the chest, and he just died, more or less, of blood yeah, loss soon afterwards. Oh, yeah, you just shank someone, because I mean, you're sh- tiny stinger. It is, I, I didn't think we'd be going against normal humans. I thought we'd be fighting actual characters that could take you a blow. You monster. You absolute monster. Think about what you've done whilst we explain the next session. Um, well, I will also say this. I actually, I actually did one piece of research, uh, which is actually kind of interesting. A wasp's stinger next to a next to a needle. Um, and for any of those who are watching or listening to this, look it up. Genuinely, look it up. Uh, uh, a size comparison, or at least a sharpness comparison, between a thin needle and a or a pin and a wasp stinger or a bee stinger. They are significantly sharper than whatever we've been able to manufacture, which means if you were to size that up to human size, uh, or even a human-sized wasp that actually naturally grew to be that size or somehow was altered that size, not just sized up, that means that their stingers would still stay on the evolutionary chart of very biologically sharp, meaning that they could be... Theoretically sharper than actual knives, which is terrifying to me because, yeah, fair enough, that could be potentially relatively easy to break. That basically means that they could actually pierce through almost anything with relative ease, cutting through flesh like butter that's been melted. Speak loud, it's a wasp rather than like a bumblebee one because their stingers actually have... Like barbs. protrusions, barbs, yeah, yeah, which is why barbs. they, which is why they die when they sting people. Because it, yeah, you know, they rip them imagine, out. imagine like a, imagine a giant version of that, and just see like a stinger and barbs is like, and that's blood what? loss right there. Mm. 
What's even better as well is that the stinger is scary as well, but you've, there's other parts of the wasp that are, that are really kind of horrible as well. Like the whole insectoid, you know, mouth, you know, with the mandibles yeah. and like, just combine that with human hands. You hold someone down and just like, you know, numb on them. <laughs> like just, just bite their head off like a praying mantis. If anyone wants as to I, see I, any I, kind I, of body horror, the, just mixing human with insect is perfect. But wasps are terrifying for this as well. As we did see, quite horrifically, because I showed the group, a wasp could have be in half with its pincers. Oh, it was not, man. It was not, it was not, it was not, it was not yeah, a nice Yeah, thank you sight. for that nightmare fuel. Yeah, but, but no, but wasps can actually, because I was on holiday in Spain once, and we had ribs, and what we did afterwards, we just watched, like, a wasp just came down, cut the meat off the bone with its pincers. Uh... It's like it was a chainsaw. It was just <laughs> like a straight line, like that. It was amazing. That is terrifying. Where is where that? is that again? Sorry. No, no, it was like it was like just a normal wasp. Jeez. What? It's it's it was just like a normal. It was just no, like 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 it was after like uh, like you know when you've eaten a rib, it's just like the last vestige. Yeah, the of last. Meat. Yeah, the last chunks. Like, yeah, imagine it, it, doing that on an actual human being. With man size as well. Exactly. Like taking Aren't you more than me up your bones? Aren't you glad that the wasp power in this game doesn't have mandibles? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I did the- raise that. <laughs> theoretically, they could have mandibles, although they just would. I guess because that we haven't actually written anything for them, I guess it would be more just you just roll strength in the form of <laughs> piercing. Or constriction as you rip something off of someone. Oh, so it's so could I wait, can I roll like strength and uh, when it would grapple and cut someone in half? I mean, theoretically, <laughs> theoretically, it would take a lot more rolls than just one roll to do that. But I mean, super you, strength. You could at least you could at least roll super strength to bite a chunk off of someone. Oh. God, you just <laughs> like save the sever, next game. You just sever the hand from their wrist. You know one. what, Sam? If that ends up being a thing that your character eventually has no other choice to do, like I don't know why, but I see it like the kind of anime thing of like I've broken both your arms. There's nothing you can do, and suddenly from their face just tears out from their human cheeks mandibles as they just go, Aah! and then just do crunch it, do into it. their neck. <laughs> no, I'm so sorry, boys. It's gonna be like one of those times, like like my character gets <laughs> grappled or like like snuck up upon and grappled, and like cat like someone else has super strength. It's like like you see, you can't move your arms, you're screwed. <laughs> Burst out, wraps around head, cuts it clean off. <laughs> or the very like grabs like goes straight to like the cheeks and just like does like the Joker smile on his face. <laughs> you know what the worst? You know what the worst part is about this day? What the fact that I'm about to win? No. I was almost hungry. (laughs) (laughs) Don't go that far. My character is a cannibal. Yeah, moving swiftly on. Uh, that yep. yeah, that's that's really relatively good. I will just add one last thing actually. Uh, obviously, flight is cool. Stingers are pretty cool. Extra arms are pretty cool. Mandibles are pretty terrifying. Yeah. Uh, the one thing I will obviously say, Kitan, aka yeah, Durable, oh, yeah, we almost forgot durability almost exoskeleton. Forgot. At the size of a human, practically like knife or bulletproof to a certain extent, I believe. At least relatively durable. If you did nothing but buffs, it's like, I think like plus 12. So if someone were to, it would take 12 damage of physical kind, so if someone's going to shoot a bullet at you, I think bullets to start off to like D8 of damage, don't they? Uh... Uh, most average guns are anywhere between D6 or D8 plus one. Uh, so yeah, basically, if you got at least two buffs that affect your chitin, then basically you'd have like 10 or 12, which means basic weaponry wouldn't be able to do any damage to you anymore whilst in hyper mode. Plus six. That means you have to get six or more. You have to get five or more on that dice to even, to even hurt me. And no, even no, then, no, 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 that's no. minus six. No, no, no. Sam, so the most you can get is three they damage. They have to get seven to do one point of damage to you. If they get six, nothing happens. <laughs> no, no, like five on the dice if it's yeah. plus one, I mean. 
Uh, yeah, yeah, but if it gets five on the dice, uh, if they get five on the dice plus uh, plus one would still be six, which means that they do nothing to you. No, they'd actually before, have to get they can, six. Before they can even hurt me, so that's what I was saying. Is like mm. they have to get that before, so they don't even do jack then. But they need to get like six then mm. to actually do a single point. So what they could do is three. The, yeah, if if they had if they had a D eight, yeah, the most they could do is three, and that's if they have a D eight, and that's if they have a plus one, and that's again if you don't have a buff by that time, um, or at least a buff to your kite or whatever by that time. So anyway. yeah, either either way, yeah. So we've got those out of the way. So now it's time to actually talk about the special physiological effects. Now, unlike spider, wasp doesn't exactly have the easy one for this. Because there is no extra physiological traits that I can think of anyway, other than pheromone sensing, the ability to specifically command uh, males or females, depending on the specific sex of the individual, as they are able to control the pheromones that are actually lying dormant within them. For instance, they can give off pheromones uh, to help find a mate, or at least specifically to help find bodyguards. Uh, depending on their specific requirements. Well, I mean, there is flight, which is, you know, you know. I mean, that is a tribute that it has over Spider, and actually over most of the uh, uh, animal transformations, really. But that's, uh, I mean, uh, other uh, than the bird. I'm, I'm saying more like a physiological trait that doesn't make them hybridized between their things. So technically that would be a know. new limb or new body part protruding. So that was back there in is hybrid. There is something that they can do that humans can't do. I think a few animals... They can actually tell where the sun is, even when it's behind the clouds. And like, they know exactly where the sun is at all times. Okay, that's cool. They can, that's like, it's mostly to help them find... Okay, I'm, I'm either misremembering this as bees, because they hooked up bees a lot as well. I, th I think wasps can also do this. No, it's, I know bees can do this, but I think wasps can also do this. Now, now I've got the two mix up in my mind. Either way, I mean, either way, it doesn't mind too much. Go on. That's because uh, this, this part is for bees. Is whenever they find a flower or some kind of product that they can more or less like mine for food, they will come back to the hive and like, wiggle their bottom to indicate where where the plant is, how far it is, and where it is in relation to the sun at that time of day, after the sun's moved. Or else where it'll be in relation to the sun whenever they do try and fly towards it. Hmm. I thought it was interesting. So no, it's like, that's you know, interesting. You'd, have, you'd have a sense of direction and where, th and like, object permanence like all of the time. Yeah. You know, like you know, you're like it's like you've basically just kind of mapped out an entire area using you just your body and senses. Plus, if you had that, plus the ability to know exactly the positions of of the sun, what that actually means in the terms of time, you'd always know perfectly what the time is without looking at a sundial, without looking at a watch, without looking at a clock, because you're like, well, it's actually X amount of particular degrees off into the east tonight so it's uh, this time in the evening or something like that and it's like at least at least you'd know I might have got that wrong the people might go oh it's actually morning you idiot but uh, it's us in the west it's, <laughs> it, it, either way either way it's it's that concept of like human knowledge plus wasp instinct could grant a person the capability to Understand the exact time if they would if they had perfect um, internal just... clock exactly perfect internal. It's the clock. line I saw on one of the pages. Um, I remember I was talking about them. It has like two powers. It was like one of them was internal clock. I guess I guess one particular one is the ability to sap moisture from almost anything that they're eating. Oh, is this one I told you about? Um, well, yeah, I, uh, it's funny, Bef before you told me about this, I did actually find out, I think a week before, that honey is actually just basically bee sick, yeah, which honestly doesn't ruin it for me at all. I still love honey, but, um... Can, can, can I, I explain, to people, <laughs> explain to people what honey is now that we figured it out? 
Uh, yeah. Do you do you want to do you want to give it give it a, give it a whirl? Yes. Okay. When bees go out to collect nectar, they store it in sacks around the body, like in their knees, which is where we get the phrase "the bees' knees." And whenever they're full, they go back to the hive, and more or less, to make it into honey, they swap. They like put it in their mouth and then give it to another wasp with their mouth, and the wasp gives it to another and have a like, bee. Also, there's that we did find there's a wasp in Mexico that does this as well. The bee gives it to another bee who gives it to another bee in their mouth, mouth to mouth to mouth to mouth to mouth to mouth, until the moisture goes from. 80% down to like 80, 70, down to 20%. At what point, at which point it becomes honey. So, whenever you eat your honey, just think that's been in about 30 to 40 mouth, what a uh, bee mouth spit out. I don't Joy, care. honey is still nice. doing that on your toast. Uh, I don't <laughs> have it on my toast. I'm not a peasant. I drink it straight from the jar like a psych- psycho. Okay. Uh, I, I, to be fair, I think that would be kind of a useful ability for a human to have to some degree, but I, I mean... I, no, no, I'm not having any sick in my mouth, no! Uh, 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 <laughs> so, sorry, uh, how many times have you ever been sick and gone, you know what, if that was just a little bit tastier, I might actually have eaten that again? No! Never! Otherwise, that would be such a waste of a meal. <laughs> I'm kidding, obviously, it's disgusting. Uh... <laughs> See, there is, there is, there is one thing wasps can do that bees don't do, which oh, is no. they can turn wood into mulch. Like, you know their hives. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. yeah more or less, they just they just bite into wood and like chew it up and make it into like this kind of mulchy material and form it into their amazing hives. Yes. What? No, they're hives that terrifying and disgusting and disturbing. No, I mean, that's, I know that's what I mean. But if you're not seeing those, like those, I think they sh- it was on a TV they are, program. They are quite amazing. Like, like, like alien monoliths coming out of the ground. Yes, that yes, they do gigantic. look gigantic. It's actually, it's actually cool. I actually do have like a, a hornet story of it. Like we had hornets in our roof, and we didn't know that they were there for like two years. They just they were very quiet, and they were just quite nice. And but when we actually got them down, because like. Uh, I remember that, like, we had someone, you know, just do something in the roof with, like, a water tank or whatever, and he just went up there, and he screamed. He literally screamed and ran down, because he thought it was a live hornet's nest, but it wasn't. They'd vacated for a long time. And we found something that was, like, the size of a car. Their goddamn, you know, huge nest that they made in our oh, roof, and it was like... That. None yeah, of that. Nah. None of that. No, it, it was all vacated. Like, we didn't even know that. We probably wouldn't have even known that they were there. If like uh, uh, if okay. we hadn't got up to do stuff. Okay, I'm gonna say this. Yes, you would have. If it was, it, let's let's be honest. If it wasn't vacated, you would have known. Here's how: the difference between a bee, bzz, a wasp, me, and a hornet. Ah! <laughs> uh, because those guys, they are much bigger. And I know that we're in the UK. Feel free to be upset with us because that we are the big baby wimps over in the United Kingdom. I think we but have hornets in the UK. In, in yeah, Northern we have hornets. We do, but they're, in, they're, in a lot, they're a lot less they're common. But I will say this. They, they are a little larger. I say a little. They are quite a bit larger. And they... Their buzzing is very obvious. You will not easily mistake it. Um, And so if there was a hornet's nest, you would have known about it because most of your house would have been shaking so much that you could have passed through the walls like the Flash. Uh, (laughs) They lived there for like a long time, it seemed, because it was just this huge bloody thing. And just nest upon nest upon nest. Uh, Just hideout cave. (laughs) Just a binge, just you know, one of those binge bouncer caves sort of things. <laughs> they they will build them anywhere they can find space. Yeah, I mean, they yeah. will find that. Like, yeah, they they're very durable that way. But there was the one thing I think if I was going to possibly get uh, a unique attribute for it would be the bees' ability to just produce wax in their body because actually glands that produce wax. Beeswax. So <laughs> this they is can, none of your you know, beeswax. You know their nests. 
their nests are actually built out of be out of their own wax. As you as you probably well know, they okay. they build their nests out of themselves more or less. It, Whereas it wasps makes sense to me. Uh, sure. Wasps have to go and actually find wood and other like depending on depending on the circumstances. Some some of them are quite different. Some of them make nests. I remember I saying once out of a snail because they were solitary as opposed to what we would consider more uh, community based. That's they just put, like, scary. That's terrifying. <laughs> Like more or less, they know I me mean, like like the like they're just the snail shell they just put their babies into. Like they're two babies and then fled off because they were solitary. Moving on. So uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to that wasps, hot, from that scary. horrific note. Yeah, wasps. Wasps don't I mean, mess around in my hundred acre woods. Um, I mean, as I mean, if we saw that we I showed you the clips of the one with the caterpillar. <laughs> yeah, and wasp the wasp went alien. Sam has just been filling our timelines with all of these, you know, the horrible wasp kills. So we're going to move can on. I, can, so, I, uh, can I not tell them the amazingness? No, no, no we're going to move on now, Sam. <laughs> so, so I'm going to say this. So we'll, we'll, I'll tell you what, we'll do it out of 10 uh, and we'll go backwards. So the ability of having non extra, like no extra appendages, non hybridization, but. Uh, let's say physio- uh, wasp-based physiological upgrades as a superpower. I'd give it a three out of ten at best. Mm, I'd I'd give that higher, to be honest, because th- these are all very useful things. To be honest, I would give That's that at you- least. I'd give it a six out of ten. You know. Yeah, I mean, tasty yeah. sick would definitely be useful. Actually, yeah, tasty sick. Yeah, tasty sick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm still really keeping it at three. What exactly yeah. do you mean by that? Uh, what do you mean? Just could you could you repeat that you said about what we're judging now specifically uh, about the wasp? Out of ten, uh, like the superpower itself. If you were to have, if you were to have a super, if you were to have this superpower. How would you how would you rate it? And it's that thing of like wasp based physiological upgrade. So not necessarily appendages or hybridization or the ability to transform into a wasp, but like say for instance the ability of pheromone sensing, the re- honey based regurgitation, and maybe even a little bit of wasp based super strength, but no wasp based appendages or any physiological traits that would become very visually obvious. In fact, would I have zero- that time thing? Yes, the time thing, yeah. Nine. Nine. Yeah. I'd love to know what. Oh, yeah, no, like, actually, I forgot about Seven and a half. No, you know what? I'll, 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 I'll buff it up. I'll buff it up. I'll there say five. Five out of ten. Yeah. I yeah. Get, I'm sticking with my six because, you know, um, you know, tasty sick. Not not, not my first choice. To be honest, but still say, very it's, useful. Not, it's not tasty sick. Nectar to them is very <laughs> sweet. All they're doing is just putting it from one mouth. In. They're not throwing up. They're just, they're just it's still spinning food. it. Nectar it's swapping. Still mm, yum. <laughs> Moving on. Okay, so, like, so okay, the ability to turn into a wasp, like the, say, your superpower just is, just is your also your superpower disgusting. is the ability to turn into a wasp. What what would you number that out? Personally, I think based on the factor of a, you do become a smaller creature. B, you do have the ability of flight, and C, you. Are a wasp. I I mean it's really kind of difficult because I kind of see wasps as kind of terrifying nuisances, and most people would want to kill me. So more than likely, I'd probably just put that in the category of three, maybe four. I I say only four, only just because I'd probably be like, oh boy, a superpower. What is it? And then it would go down to three as soon as I find out that it's turning into a wasp, and I'll probably die upon the first day of having it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, anything, any power in which I could potentially get eaten, not a good power in my opinion. So I'm like, so I would put that power. down to like. That's, <laughs> well, no, I'm not going to Cannibal Island. I mean, like in the normal world. I mean, you don't know. You'll never know. Not on Cannibal Island. Nah. I'm giving it a two personally because flight Fair is enough. cool and everything, and it is cool, but uh, that would be my flight is cool, my but it's not worth choice. literally losing every aspect of your livelihood just to go. Hmm, yeah. You know what? I I won't take the bus today, and then you fly out of the house, and someone goes, "Oh no, 
and then immediately <laughs> or just the smash end. on the bus's window. Yeah, like. how how is anyone going to explain your disappearance to your your family and friends? Where did Alex go? I don't know. They just disappeared, and no one ever heard of Alex ever again. Ah, uh, mm, I'd probably give it like a four, five, like a four, because. You know, at the very least, I could just fly about my room. And whenever I get to... Think of how great it would be just to eat food, but it's, like, giant-sized. You just... you. And actually, again, wasps don't eat meat. All they do is oh eat my god! Oh things. my god! Sam, I've got the perfect solution to your spider problem, right? I'm you not... turn to a wasp, you lay your eggs in the spider and gain dominance. And then... I mean... <laughs> and back again. I mean, thing is, though, it'd have to be a specific type of wasp. To do that, Sam. Damn it, so, Sam. I, also, I mean, I have to go. I have to go near a spider as well. Even uh, uh, fair enough. Yeah, that's fair enough. I mean, uh, yeah. I, I. Inst- you know what? Also, you know what? You've you've sold me on it. Three. It is. It is just a solid three at this point. Also, by the, also, you should say they're both predators. Fl- spiders will also eat wasps, and wasps also kill spiders. Use them. I mean, the I want to see. I want to see that fight. Where's that death battle? I mean, they they have done death battles in the past. Wasps and spiders. No, uh, never Wasps. mind. Moving on. Moving that's, on. That's the next two. Hi- hybrid hybrid mode. I'm gonna get this one. Okay, so <laughs> if you look like Wasman, Hornet, or Adrian, I think it works for you. But realistically, this is the real world. You're going to look like a giant abomination, whether you can transform back into your human form or not. So I'm going to say, we'll say that the ability allows you to turn in and out of hybrid mode. Outside of hybrid mode, you turn back into your original human form, unmolested by the original power. Therefore, no matter how horrifying you look, you will still be yourself outside of the usage of that power. Now that we've got that parameter, I'm going to give it a solid 8. Mainly reason is because it's body horror, terrifying, and although it is super cool, badass, and let's be honest, quite powerful if you really put it in the right circumstances, I still think that there are certain other powers that most would be able to take and just go with. That would just be a little better. Plus, if you ended up being Man Spider, I just... No, 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 the flight has sold me. The flight has sold me. Yeah, no, nine. I'm going to go for a solid nine now. It was a shaky eight, but it's a solid nine. What about you guys? Uh, uh, you know, before, you know, uh, Sam's character, before actually looking into it, and before uh, watching The Wasp Woman, I would have given it about, like, uh, you know, a five at best. But now I'm going to go full nine out of ten. Because oh, okay. I am completely sold on it now. Because it's just, it's so cool if you're in hybrid mode. I mean, you look like an abomination. Brilliant. Why would I ever change? Like, because <laughs> you you look so you look so weird. So you're already scaring people. You can fly. You could like kill people with your stingers. You could just sort of like you got super here. You know, got super strength, super durability. You got like super senses. You know, I mean, there's. There's very few downsides to it, you know, other than, you know, if you get, you know, killed by bug spray or whatever, that would suck. But, you know, that's, yeah, it's got pretty much everything. And, uh, yeah, you know, maybe my next character could be a wasp, you know, I Dare didn't really Alex. consider it before. <laughs> I've just said it could be. I said it could In, be. Um, I've got the answer for why it's 10 out of 10. And it's it's a specific reason for all the ladies out there pregnancy have you ever thought this is really painful especially when it comes out of you ever thought you know that man who impregnated me would be better if i just injected the children into him and they (laughs) ate him (laughs) killed him as they as they came out of him that's why it's 10 out of 10 for me only because i don't (laughs) want to die i mean uh, i should say infested with uh parasitic creatures should say, uh, I'm going to say it's still a, still a nine, but go on, Sam. I should, I should say, best part, depending on the wasp that does it, is that not only do you forego pregnancy, you also forego quite a lot of having to look after the babies. Because if you do this, 
At least we saw with the caterpillars. The caterpillar will do will waste the rest of its life after being eaten out of by the maggots to protect the children from invaders and be very motherly and nurturing to these things until they reach a like solid adulthood. a solid two guys. That's what I'm gonna say. A solid That's, two. I, <laughs> no, I, mean, 10 I don't even, I don't even know how to respond to that. You've I given don't, me a lot to respond to and I just I've got nothing. I got uh, nothing. Flight? Okay. So you got flight, you got super strength, you got body armor, so if someone shoots you, bam, deflect. You've got Despite all of uh, that horrifying news, and you don't have to worry about pregnancy. Best power, ten out of ten. Bam. You know what? You you know what, Sam? You got me. You're right. Ten out of ten. No, I'm I'm still going with nine. I still think there's still one thing that you can't get out of this, and here is where we will come to the end part of this, which is obviously we're going to talk about how it works in Animite Tales, but the last thing I will say is the big weakness. Smoke and poisonous gas. Funnily enough, all insects have the same usual issue. Gaseous or aerosol-based things really do a number on them. And that's where we come to the connecting part between the creatures in Animite Tales. The power works exactly as we've spoken about. You have hybrid mode, you have the normal transformation, and you have a couple of different special abilities in between. But pretty much it is a transformation-based power, so sadly no internal clock-only ability where you don't need to look like a wasp to do so. However, despite this, there are a few other bits and pieces that do come from this. But yes, the main weaknesses are, in fact, poisonous gases and toxic smoke, or even just smoke in general. But other than that, it's a relatively well-rounded power. You take multiple times damage when you're in your small mode, but other than that, you've got a nice, decent body armor, super strength, super dexterity. You have the ability of pheromone sensing, commanding and controlling and summoning others of your own species if you have this special ability for it. You can make and protrude stingers from your limbs that, as we've already established, would be quite dangerous and sharp especially of the size if it came out of a human, flight, and of course poison, which is very cool. But yeah, after all of those different abilities, I can only say I am very much looking forward to seeing what you bring to the table with this power, Sam. Don't forget, you did say you take four times damage when in miniature wasp mode. Don't forget, you also have people who try to hit you are at disadvantage. You are at advantage to evade their attacks. So you do have that, which means you may take four times damage, but you're very hard to hit. That is Well, true. we'll see if the rolls are in your favour. Mm-hmm. Well, yes. that's, why I won't, that's why I won't ever be in miniature wasps mode again. <laughs> To be fair, I do see I you using Joe, it. I know Joe's just going to send a bird at me. No, no, no. I do see. I do see you using it more often. I just. I obviously do not see you using it on combat ever. I mean, unless if you used it with the, like an SPMA to like reactively transform to dodge an attack because you had no other chance or choice. But yeah, I, yeah. I, in all honesty and in all fairness to you, I, I, I personally wouldn't see any reason in being in the small wasp mode unless if you were trying not to be seen, like you did uh, in the last session. So yeah, so that was mostly just to, to look up without this gigantic wasp, what, this gigantic wasp person just being seen no, yeah, in the air, just like enough. whoa, well, that's what they are. <laughs> so, I guess the last thing that we'll really say then for this is. If someone came to you and said, would you, if you could have any powers in the world, what would it be? But then they said, I only have the ability to grant you the power of Wasp. Which one of the three would you take? And, or would you take any of them? In other words, would you want, would you want this power? Yes or no? Absolutely. I mean, I would definitely get the hybrid mode. I want to be, uh, you know, a scary Wasp person. And also, also, there's another part of the uh, the power as well in Animite Tales. You have the ability to transform into a giant wasp if yeah, you so, exactly. so desire. So 
if you have that with the hybrid mode as well, it's like definitely. I mean, it's a, a yes before, but then it would be like, you know, a hard yes if that came in. The other ones, though, I could probably do without them. Definitely not like the tiny wasp <laughs> version. Uh, to I mean, be honest, be right. before I learned all that I have learned about wasps, I probably would have said. No, why are you here? What are superpowers? Who are you? <laughs> but now that I do know about wasps, I'd probably still say that, but also add the GS. <laughs> Fair enough. I think for me, I th- I'd say no to only turning into a wasp because I don't want to die uh, in that way. Uh, I I'd say no to the non, and I'd probably just go with the hybrid mode because even if it is any kind of hybrid mode, as long as I can control as and when I turn into the hybrid mode, I still feel like there's a couple of different ways that I could figure out how it would work, um, and how it could work for me. So with that, I might take it. That is a resounding maybe, um, but I wouldn't take any of the other two, um. Yeah, I guess that's I guess that's it for this episode. That was wasp physiology. Thank you very much for everyone for listening. Next week we'll be at we'll be back at it again with another episode. Who knows what that will be? I sure don't. Anyway, thank you very much guys for listening and hopefully we'll see you for the next dev plays as they continue through the crucible of avarice. Thank you and have a good night. Bye. See you in the future. And as always, ciao ciao for now.